It's time for The Verdict. The Verdict is a lively discussion of current events and legal issues pertinent to Oklahomans. The Verdict is hosted by Kent Myers. It's time for The Verdict. And welcome to The Verdict this February 1st, Sunday morning, the first day of February, and a day that's significant for another reason. We're only two days away, Oklahomans, from having an opportunity to go to the polls and cast your vote about whom it is you'd like to see as President of the United States. That's going to be a good part of what we do today, is discuss the Oklahoma presidential primary, and we're going to have a fun show. We're going to have a lively show. I know we say that every once in a while, but we really mean it today, uh, because we're going to have Mike McCarvel on, the uh, host of uh, uh, Open Mic Live on KTOK. Mike has been with us a number of times. He's always got interesting uh, views, comments, insight, wisdom, and uh, he brings a lot of fun to the set. So uh, let's sit tight. Let's get ready to enjoy Mike McCarvel and another edition of The Verdict. But now let's hear from a few people that make this show possible. We'll see you in a minute. Welcome back to The Verdict. Once again, uh, this Sunday, we are very pleased to have joining us uh, the Honorable Mike McCarvel, uh, the host of Open Mic Live on KTOK. Mike's been on with us a number of times. He's, of course, a native Oklahoman, a writer, a journalist, uh, been uh, paying close attention to political matters for uh, many, many years, and he's going to come give us uh, his wisdom and thoughts about uh, a number of political races that uh, we'll be dealing with here in Oklahoma. Ken, is that your nice way of saying I've been around a long time? Well, uh, yeah. Just trying, let me understand this. Yeah, yeah, you have. But <laughs> I can put say that. The a while. I have to. So we're 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 almost even in that regard. But I'd rather not check and see who's yeah. ahead. Uh, anyway, Mike, uh, thanks for joining us again. This my is your, uh, uh, one of your many appearances here on the Verdict, and we're really pleased to what have. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk a little politics. Let's talk politics. Let's oh, don't talk uh, football. Yeah, that, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's, let's don't let's go down that. that road. Let's. Uh, well, we're here at February first. On February third, we're going to have the uh, presidential primary in Oklahoma, and I want us to pull up a graphic for our viewers to uh, see uh, just who's going to be on the ballot at least as best we can tell, yeah. uh, from the state election board. And as you can see from that, on the Democratic side, we've got Howard Dean, Wesley Clark. Dick Gephardt's likely to be on the ballot, but of course he has dropped out. Dennis Kucinich, John Kerry, Joe Lieberman, John Edwards, Lyndon LaRouche, and Al Sharpton. On the Republican side, George W. Bush and uh, Bill, somebody named Bill Wyatt. Somebody named Bill Wyatt, <laughs> uh, whose address is listed on uh, with the election board as simply California. I tell you, Kent, on the Democrat side, there are some others we ought to put lines through their names too. Dennis Kucinich being one of them. Lyndon LaRouche, he's going nowhere. Al Sharpton's not going anywhere, but he's not going to pull out. And then you get kind of into the hardcore. Yeah, Dean and Clark and, and Kerry and Lieberman and Edwards. Woo, interesting. Let's let's talk about these uh, candidates individually and just kind of give me your take. I know a lot can happen in two days, uh, as as we saw uh, in Iowa. A lot happened we in certainly one day, did, didn't we? or about yeah. forty-five seconds. Yeah. But uh, let's let's focus a little bit on what how you uh, evaluate the Howard Dean exploding head. Uh, announcement after the Iowa caucus when he launched into some kind of a screaming tirade. Howard Dean made several strategic mistakes, in my opinion, having been through Iowa caucuses in the 1980 uh, presidential race. I can tell you, I thought he made a couple of very serious mistakes. Number one, the day of the caucuses, Howard Dean made a statement that said, in essence, I'm going to win these caucuses. I'm going to be number one in Iowa. Not only was he not number one, he wasn't number two, he was a distant number three. And then, almost, almost fourth. Almost fourth. And then he imploded yeah. with uh, his uh, bombastic remarks uh, that, that just have people scratching their heads. Even Democrats were saying, well, well what is that? How, this is not presidential. This looks like a guy who's on the edge. Now, I can explain how that happened to him. And people may have difficulty understanding this. But having been through this with candidates, what happens is you get into a situation like that, 
A candidate's probably been up for 36 to 48 hours. Uh, he's going on caffeine uh, and donuts uh, and fast food. And, and your system, you just candidates just go into overload. If I had been advising uh, uh, Howard Dean, I would have said, Governor, go down there, say thank you, we're going to live again on down the road, and go to your motel room, go to the hotel room, and go to bed. But instead, he launched into that uh, off-the-cuff, uh, out-of-control, uh, bombastic speech, as I say, that just had everybody scratching their heads. I think he was hurt by the results in Iowa, and I think his speech after even brought in uh, even more question how much in control or out of control he is. I think he's on the way out. Yeah, it looks to me like that that, uh, that can certainly uh, go to his detriment uh, as the primaries go forward. Oh, sure, and if you're John Kerry and, uh, and uh, John uh, uh, Edwards, you gotta love it. Yeah, I mean, you're riding the roller coaster. Yeah, you don't even and, have to comment on and, it. And yeah, that's right. And here's Kerry uh, carrying it uh, with uh, exceeding expectations. He had he had he played it very smart. He had said, "Well, I hope to finish in the top group." Goodness, he won. What in Iowa? What so is it about? He got the big mole going. Yeah, what is it about Kerry? You think that has. Uh, or, uh, has turned it around at least to this point. Well, I, I think number one, I, I think he put, he kept his head during the campaign. He he stayed pretty much on message, and almost every day or two he was fine tuning his message. Him and his advisors. I thought his uh, play initially, and then he he reiterated it just before the Iowa caucuses, the Vietnam War experience, decorated hero. I mean, he did all he had to do was reference the fact that he was in Vietnam. Well, most folks already knew he was a decorated war hero, and then he trotted out, not trotted out, he brought out the, the Republican gentleman from California whose life Kerry saved in a, yeah. in the, in the, in a delta uh, in, uh, in Vietnam, and I, boy, that, that, that gave some oomph to the message all over again. So uh, Kerry had a lot going for him, and I say, but to me, the biggest strategic uh, 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 thing that happened was Kerry and Edwards, to a lesser extent, set these very modest expectations for what was going to happen in Iowa. And you know, when you exceed expectations and all of a sudden, you got the big mogul. And yeah. that, and Kerry and Dean, uh, I mean, Kerry and uh, Edwards both uh, had big mo coming out of Iowa, no question about it. What do you think about uh, Clark? Uh, I heard something a couple of weeks ago where Clark made a, a kind of a, a condescending comment about uh, John Kerry being just a junior officer clearly implying that as a general he has more credentials than somebody who in Vietnam uh, yes. uh, 20 years ago was just a junior officer. Yes. Sounded like a remark he didn't need to make. I, I agree with you. And I, I think uh, Wes Clark in a lot of ways I think is, is kind of like Howard Dean. I think in a lot of ways he's his own worst enemy. Listen, here's a guy who's been a general. He, he's used to wearing these stars yeah. up here. And uh, but based on what the scuttlebutt that you kind of hear out of these uh, primary and caucus states is that he tends to, to treat people in a crowd that way. I mean, he's a very nice guy, but it's still kind of, when I speak, you will listen. Uh, and, and he gets a little strident that way. And people say he's having a very difficult time making the transition from that military mindset of, I give the orders, you march, to trying to bring people in by inclusion, uh, uh, convincing them, cajoling them, if you will, to join his campaign. What do you see uh, about Joe Lieberman? Joe Lieberman started off uh, always well received in Oklahoma. Uh, having his Oklahoma ties as he does through his oh, guess, this, wife's this, family. When uh, this opened, I, uh, Ken, I thought Joe Lieberman was going to carry Oklahoma. I didn't think there would be any question about it. But I also thought he'd do well in the early caucus in the primary. And, 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 and the problem, I think one problem Joe Lieberman has is he just completely uh, ignored uh, Iowa. Yes. Uh, put all his eggs in New Hampshire. And uh, then, you know, here we come down to Oklahoma, and I'll tell you, among listeners to KTOK, my show anyway, I think most of them, even some Republicans, kind of like Joe Lieberman. He's perceived to be the moderate, the responsible guy, the well-respected guy. Al Gore's running mate four years ago, but he just hadn't, he hasn't gotten any traction. Uh, and I, I don't think he has any, and as a result, I don't think he's going to do very well in Oklahoma. Let's use this time to take a break, and when we come back, we'll kind of get your prediction on how Oklahoma's going to come oh, out. Oh, that ought to be interesting. And I how, can't wait to see what I think. Well, <laughs> you, you've got a couple of minutes to think about it. Uh, we're visiting with Mike McCarville, a host of uh, Open Mic Live on KTOK. We'll be right back.
Welcome back, Oklahoma. We're here uh, on Sunday morning, February 1st, talking with Mike McCarville, the host of Open Mic Live on KTOK, about uh, a number of political races. And uh, uh, Mike has been looking at our uh, at our crystal ball your crystal over ball, our break yes. and has come up with his idea about who's <laughs> going to win the Oklahoma primary. So tell us. Well, this is oh, great uh, seer. yeah, oh yeah, this is the yeah the great sage sticking his neck out about three feet. I hope no one remembers what I'm about to say. Number we can, one, we can edit it. No, well, I hope we, we will. Number one in Oklahoma on February the third, John Edwards. Number two, John Kerry. Number three, Wesley Clark. Number four, Howard Dean, and number five or number four, depending on these position, could switch Joe Lieberman. How do you come up and with... And I can't the, believe I'm saying Lieberman's going to be at the bottom of the rung here, but well, I don't I'm, think he is. Well, I'm perhaps more surprised about Edwards being at the top of the rung. What what about Edwards puts him there? Perceived by many to be a, a bit more moderate than John Kerry, and among conservative Oklahoma Democrats, at least those who bother uh, to go vote, uh, that'll be important. Uh, I think he's got a, a head of steam. I think he uh, uh, appeals to the southern mentality, or if you will, or the southwestern mentality. And I, I think he will benefit uh, from what I see as uh, the uh, downward trend in Howard Dean's campaign, primarily. Uh, let's switch off the primary itself, or the participants, and talk about the fact that we have an the early date of primary. February the third. Yeah, marvelous thing for the state of Oklahoma. Why? Well, think about it. Look at all the attention we're getting from all the Democrats. I mean, it, it, I mean, this has been going on for months now. They're spending money on radio. They're spending money on television. Uh, they're coming into the state. John Kerry is the only one, and I think he's going to be in anytime soon. Or, uh, and uh, uh, a marvelous thing, and I think it's a great tribute to the late Senator Keith Leftwich, the Democrat from South Oklahoma City, who had the idea, authored the bill for the February 3rd primary in Oklahoma, moving our primary way forward. So now we become all of a sudden, we're a player in the presidential selection process. For me, an old political war horse, or young political wars. I think it's just great. <laughs> I, I mean, it is. Just think again. Just think about all the attention we've gotten from the Democrats running for president. And and, and February third, we're we're going to be very important. Yeah, in, by in the selection process. By the time we got to our primary in the past, everything was over. Oh, it was and all nobody over. cared. Yeah, yeah. It was a fait accompli. I mean, yeah. who cared? Let's change races. Okay. The, we got another good one. To we talk got about. another good yep. one. The U.S. Senate race. Oh uh, uh, yes. Let's start out on the Democratic side, mm. uh, and we've got some names to talk about: Brad Carson, Monty Johnson, uh, Jim Rogers. Yes. Uh, let's start with Brad Carson. Brad Carson, of course, the the congressman from the second district, uh, far and away the front runner here. He's raised a whole lot of money already. He's hit the ground running, got an organization. Apparently done, um, apparently done well in Congress. He's done very well in Congress. He's perceived to be uh, moderate to conservative, which uh, sells well with conservative Democrats, obviously, in the state. Uh, very smart guy. Uh, and I will tell you, you know, you go back to the 1994 Senate race between uh, Jim Inhofe and Dave McCurdy. The issue that killed Dave McCurdy and uh, that elected Jim Inhofe initially was gun control. It was the issue, the overriding issue in the rural Democratic counties in this state. Brad Carson is not only against gun control, he's a member of the National Rifle Association, he's a member of the Oklahoma Rifle Association. Uh, I went to the Oklahoma Rifle Association banquet here a couple of months back. Here's Brad Carson. I watched the guy work a room. He's a master. There must have been 300 people there. I bet he shook every hand three times. I was, I was very impressed. Uh, and Monty Johnson, the attorney from Asalasol, president of the Chamber of Commerce there, from everything I've heard, a uh, very nice guy. Political unknown, doesn't have a chance against Brad Carson. Jim Rogers from Midwest City, not a chance. Brad Carson is going to be the nominee of the Democratic Party, and that gets us to the Republican selection more, process. A little more interesting side. Uh, it's Republican going to be fascinating. Side. We thought, you know, a, a few uh, months ago that former Oklahoma City Mayor Kirk Humphreys was the, the anointed nominee right. of the right. Republican Party. Well, funny things happen when, when elected officials and others try to anoint someone as the nominee of their party. Uh, Republicans in particular, conservative Republicans, somehow think they ought to be a part of the process. Well, Oklahoma We ought to go are vote. Oklahomans, uh, to a person, are pretty independent Well, thinkers. absolutely. So, here, like so here's what has happened, Kent. We've got, we've got a number of pretty, pretty solid Republican candidates who have all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, as time has passed, have kind of bubbled to the surface. Corporation Commissioner Bob Anthony, a bulldog if you've ever seen one. Well-known uh, statewide. Well-known statewide. He's he gotten the most uh, votes any Republican running this state has ever received. Uh, he's been on the statewide ballot, not once, but over and over again. Uh, has a, uh, I mean, he's well-known and well-liked by a lot of conservative Democrats as well. Uh, he's got a website up and running. Uh, he's raising money. 
Uh, he's going for it. Uh, former Congressman Tom Coburn, a guy who said, I'm going to term limit myself, and whoa, a politician who kept his word. He, he did it. He did it. And in the process, he's in the, in the, in the time since he left Congress, uh, he's beaten prostate cancer. He's taken a serious look at it, may become a candidate. If he does, I mean, Katie bar the door. Linda Murphy, a one-time Republican nominee for a state public uh, uh, superintendent uh, in, of schools, uh, has sent out an email saying, hey, I'm in this. Well, State Senator Mike Fair, also going to get into it. Mike Fair, Linda Murphy, Tom Coburn, in my opinion, are, are three pretty conservative Republicans. They'll appeal kind of the same base in the Republican Party. And in that three-way deal, I think Coburn gets the bulk of it. I may be wrong. Uh, time will tell. Uh, Bob Anthony, moderate to conservative, is going to have money, well-known. Kirk Humphrey's never been on a statewide ballot. He's been mayor of Oklahoma City. What does that get him in uh, Garfield County? What does that get him in Washington County? That gets him that he was mayor of Oklahoma City, and a lot of people go, they don't think much of that. They may not be a plus. They don't. That's exactly they right. Maybe a minus. That's right. But are you up for another prediction? Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, U.S. Senate race. US well, Senate okay, I've already, I've already said the Democratic nominee is going to yep, be Brad Carson. You have. Um, let's, assume, let's assume that when the, all this shakes out on the Republican side, the candidates are Kirk Humphreys, Tom Coburn, and Bob Anthony. Right now, I would say Anthony runs one, Coburn probably runs two, Kirk Humphreys gets knocked out. And then the runoff between those two. Keeping in mind that Kirk Humphreys has the support, uh, ardent support, of what we would now call the Republican establishment. Senator Jim Inhofe, he's probably got the tacit support of Senator Don Nichols, although Senator Nichols has been much less uh, vociferous about it than Senator Inhofe, uh, and a lot of others. But I, I do not see Kirk Humphreys getting traction out around the state. It's traction that Bob Anthony's going to have the instant he announces, that Tom Coburn is going to have the instant he announces. And Linda Murphy, Mike Fair will, will have some as well. So it's going to be fascinating. Big big coin toss is what it is. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's change the subject. Sure. Last 30 seconds or so, tell us about uh, Coach for Kids. Coach for Kids, Oklahoma State Public School System. I partnered up with them about six years ago. The goal is to put a warm winter coat on the back of every elementary school student in Oklahoma City who needs one. Primarily, and how are we doing? Primarily in the inner city schools. Yeah. This year, we were able, or 2003, we were able to purchase 2,120 coats, gave a coat to every kid who needed one. Praise the Lord, and uh, thanks uh, to all the folks who contributed. Raised over $60,000, a marvelous thing. Uh, who, the, you're partnered up with the public? Oklahoma City Public School System, yeah. yes. Well, it's yeah. a great program. Thank you're you, to sir. be commended for it. Well, and I want to tell you how much we appreciate you coming and joining us again on The Verdict. Uh, after these election results are in, uh, we want you to come back. Oh, and, my uh, God. Do I have to do that? And get anointed <laughs> as, uh, as the king of uh, predictors. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, thanks for coming. <laughs> Thank you, Kent. Appreciate uh, it. Let's take a break. Uh, thanks again to Mike McCarville for joining us. We'll be back. Welcome back. Uh, we enjoyed having Mike McCarville on, as always. He uh, livens things up around here, and heaven knows we need that from time to time. Uh, next, uh, next week, we're going to have a very special guest, uh, Mary Malone, the editor and publisher of the uh, Journal Record newspaper, a 100-year-old Oklahoma City newspaper that publishes a lot of business and good news, uh, and sometimes not so good news, uh, to uh, many, many subscribers. Mary Malone is an interesting uh, person, being the only woman editor and publisher of a statewide newspaper. And uh, she is uh, going to share with us some uh, candid comments about what it's like getting the news together every day. Uh, last week, we asked you to uh, join with us on our website and take a look at a poll that we had, should cockfighting be a crime? Let's bring up the results of that. Uh, perhaps surprisingly, perhaps not, 16% said yes. Cockfighting should be a crime in Oklahoma, and some comments were, it is barbaric and should be banned. It is animal cruelty. Uh, on the other hand, 84% uh, of you said no. We need to save uh, not only the rural lifestyle, but also a very good business uh, for Oklahoma was one comment that we got. We had a lot of hits on the website, and we really appreciate you taking your time 
uh, to join our website on the uh, www.theverdict.tv. Tell us what you want to see, tell us what you want to hear about, and we will get busy uh, putting together shows for you. Uh, on behalf of The Verdict staff, uh, we really appreciate you coming, and just remember, go Lady Chargers from Heritage Hall. Uh, let's see you next Sunday. I think you'll enjoy Mary Malone. Thanks a lot.